Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. Today I'm not at my door, but I'm just down the street in this patch of milkweed. And I originally came down to look for monarch butterflies. I'm in the Appalachian Mountains at about 2,700 feet. And milkweed is very common along roadsides here. And it's a great place to find monarchs. In addition to finding monarchs on milkweed, when you're, if you're going out to look at monarchs, or if you just want to go out and look at milkweed and look at the species assemblages that you can find on milkweed plants, you're going to see things like, well, this milkweed beetle, not to be confused with a milkweed bug. This is actually a true beetle that lives on and around the milkweed plants. You'll also find tussock moth caterpillars like these with the classic black and orange markings on them and you'll also find orange aphids in addition to those things you're going to find milkweed bugs and that's going to be the topic of today's episode and i'm going to show you six things you need to know about milkweed bugs to understand their biology and their association and co-evolution with this milkweed plant so stay tuned Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's the make this invasive. It's exotic. It's not yours. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's... First thing I want you to know that milkweed bugs are hemipterans. They're true bugs, and we say bugs, that is technically a entomology term to describe organisms that have a proboscis or a beak rather than chewing mouthparts. Other bugs that you might be familiar with would be stink bugs. Stink bugs have a proboscis, which is like a straw, that they use to pierce plant stems in order to gain nutrition. Another bug you might be familiar with is actually a predator, and it's the assassin bug or the wheel bug. And it's a predator on other insects, and it uses its proboscis, instead of biting mouthparts, to penetrate insects that it captures, inject them with digestive enzymes, and suck out the nutrition. The third bug is probably the one you don't like the most, but may have heard about the most, and those are bed bugs. Bed bugs also don't have biting mouth parts. They have a proboscis they use to stab a mammal and get a blood meal. And it's the females that do this to get high protein nutrition from blood to produce eggs and continue their species. So milkweed bugs are true bugs. Milkweed bugs feed on milkweed. When they're small and very tiny and have a tiny proboscis, they just penetrate the epidermal cells of the milkweed and feed on some of the nutrition in the cells and the sap. As they get bigger, their favorite food is the milkweed seeds inside the pods. And the larger adults will use their proboscis to stab through the milkweed pod and reach a seed inside. And they'll inject digestive enzymes through that straw-like mouth part They'll digest the seed and then they can suck up the partially digested contents. Milkweed bugs can eat other seeds. For example, you can collect some milkweed bugs and keep them at home and watch them go through their entire life cycles by feeding them raw shelled sunflower seeds. And they'll feed quite well on those. On the milkweed plants, they'll collect some of the alkaloids that make them toxic and so they will take in the toxins from the milkweed seeds and make them unpalatable for other organisms. When milkweed bugs are feeding, sometimes you'll see them in a group or a cluster, and they seem to probably release a chemical message to the other ones that they found a really good food source. And so you'll often see larger milkweed bugs feeding on the same seed. And I guess it makes sense because together, they're injecting these digestive enzymes. So by working together, they get a better nutrient punch from their absorption of these things. Fact number three, 
Milkweed bugs have aposomatic coloration. What does that mean? It means they've got bright colors and it serves as a warning coloration. So for example, this black and orange is a pretty classic uh, color for toxic organisms. Think of the coral snake, think about the black and orange adult monarch butterflies, think of black and orange bumblebees. They all have a warning coloration to say that they're either distasteful or they're dangerous. The red eft, another one of my favorite organisms, is an example of aposematic coloration. It has a bright orange color and it walks around in the forest with impunity, advertising its distastefulness to predators rather than trying to camouflage itself or hide like many other salamanders do. Milkweed bugs undergo incomplete metamorphosis like other bugs. What does that mean? Rather than a complete metamorphosis like a monarch butterfly caterpillar changing into a black and orange adult where the adult looks completely different. In incomplete metamorphosis, there's a gradual change. The life cycle goes from egg, nymph, to adult. It's three stages. The egg hatches and the nymph comes out and looks somewhat like an adult, only much smaller but lacks some of the adult features. As it grows and molts five times, called five instars, it'll gradually take on more and more of the adult characteristics as the nymphs develop. And you can see in this group, you can pick out all sorts of different age ranges from the very small to the nearly adult bugs. Fascinating fact number five. You can actually tell male milkweed bugs from female milkweed bugs by turning them over and looking under their abdomen. The males have two distinct black lines on their abdomen, while the females have one black line and two dots. How do I do it? Well, sometimes to get a good photo, I'll take a bug and put it in a small jar and pop it in the fridge for five minutes. The insects are cold-blooded, technically exotherms, and so they can't control their body temperature. So put them in a cool place, their body cools down. And if their body cools down, then they will slow down as well. And within a few minutes, they'll revive and take off running again. Fascinating fact number six. Milkweed bugs in northern climates will migrate. They're very cold sensitive. And at the end of a season, insects will go into a state called diapause, where adults won't develop sexually and they'll kind of slow down and get ready for winter hibernation. But a lot of these milkweed bugs in northern climates will freeze to death in the winter. They don't hibernate real well. So they will actually migrate south to find places where it's tempered enough that they can make it through the winter and then they'll migrate back again in the spring. So a really interesting thing about insect migrations. We usually think of birds as being migratory animals, but not so much insects. And there are several species of insects that actually do migrate. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature at Your Door, a close look at milkweed bugs. Thanks for watching my channel. If you like what I do, please subscribe and give me a like and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. So until the next episode, this has been Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. Thanks for watching my channel.